later in this episode of PKOS. Let's just notice that PCI opens a lot of doors for our operating system. There are a lot of bits here. There's a whole bunch of information. Look at this. We're in the Linux kernel, and I don't know about you, but this actually looks somewhat familiar. Like we can actually go into here and read this, right? Welcome back to the PageKey operating system series where we're building an OS from scratch. If you're new here, this is PageKey Tech where we rebuild existing things from our day-to-day -day life to understand them better and take back tech. So we left off with some VGA issues that we fixed and we extended our own little standard library by adding memset and memcopy. So what's next? Eventually we need to store some files or else we can't get much further with this. So as it turns out, QEMU has PCI hardware for hard drives, and we'll get into that in one second. But in order to get to the file system, we need to interact with the hard drive. In order to interact with the hard drive, we need to interact with PCI, or Peripheral Component Interconnect. So if we zoom out here, you'll see that I've done quite a bit of research on this, and there is a lot of disjointed information on PCI across the internet and everyone seems to know about it but me so I had to piece together the very basic details of PCI and I'm going to present them here for you and I hope it helps you and saves you some time if you're interested in this topic. At the end of the video we're going to get into the code and write something to iterate all of the PCI devices and hopefully get some information about them. We'll see if we get that far. For now though let's jump into the research. So where did we start with this? Well, first of all, if you check the QEMU system i386, which is the emulator that we're using right now for the 32-bit Intel processor system, and you read the hardware that comes with it, you'll notice two PCI IDE interfaces with hard disk and CD-ROM support. Now you might be saying, what is IDE? I said the same thing. IDE is Integrated Drive Electronics. It's the name of an interface for floppy drives hard drives, and CD-ROM drives. And as will become relevant later, QEMU does not mention PCIe, PCI Express, so I think we can assume that it's the old PCI. But PCI Express is backwards compatible, so we're fine either way. Now how do we use PCI? OSDev.org, as always, has us covered with this. There is quite a bit of information on this website. My main takeaways were that it's totally software-driven initialization, so it's on you as the OS creator or the BIOS to initialize PCI devices. The CPU does not have its own PCI address space access mechanism, so we need a separate device, the PCI bridge or host bridge for this. Although I think these two pieces might be integrated in modern hardware, I'm not sure. Pretty sure I'm wrong on this one. Here's a modern multiprocessor, multi-root, blah, 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 blah. Modern system, and you have the CPU and a host PCI bridge separate. You also don't see anything about host PCI bridge being built in in the Intel architecture manuals, which we'll see later in this video. So I don't know why I said that. If someone knows, let me know. Maybe this is a thing, but I'm pretty sure it's not. I think I was just talking. So there you go. The big one, here it is, config space access. How do we access that configuration space for PCI? Well, it turns out there is an IO port that we can use. I had a really tough time understanding what was going on here, but really it comes down to, we can just rely on these IO ports right here, similar to how we interacted with VGA hardware. We use these to communicate with PCI. This is a legacy way of doing it, but it still works. And essentially we set the config address. There is a bit mapping to this config address and we can do an out on this IO port after setting this up, whatever information we send to that will set the address that we're currently reading data from. And what does that mean? Well, you'll see bus, device, and function here, as well as offset. So that's how PCI devices are divided up. You have a bus. Within a bus, you have a number of devices. Within the device, you have a number of functions. Once you've selected that, well, we're only getting 32 bits, or is it 16? I'm not sure, honestly. But when we check the config data, we can only get so many bits. And if you look over here at the bit mapping from Wikipedia, there are a lot of bits here. There's a whole bunch of information. So the offset allows us to pick which part of this massive data structure we want to read. So with this information, we can start to read information about PCI 
from the disk. We can probably even write to it somehow. Three ways to enumerate PCI, which allows us to see what we have available. Brute force, which is what we're probably going to start with. Recursion, and you can either let the firmware set it up or you can do it yourself. For all three of these, we need a check device method. Now, what does Wikipedia have to tell us about this? A few interesting things. They gave us this address space that we've already seen, and it links to the Linux kernel. It says to check out this PCI slash early.c file for simple methods for reading and writing the PCI config. And this is pretty cool because look at this. We're in the Linux kernel, and I don't know about you, but this actually looks somewhat familiar. Like we can actually go in here and read this, right? It's saying out long, so do an out with 32 bits, 32 bit register. The first argument is right here, and we're saying the enable bit, remember, is one, so 0x8000, or whatever that is. Let's go ahead and compare side by side. Enable bit is 31, right? So this is just setting bit 31 to one. Then we're going to logically or it with the bus left shifted 16. We're not even worried about whatever is reserved here, but we are shifting the bus 16. Same for the device, or I guess it's called the slot in this case. Same for the function and then the offset. The second argument is a very familiar address right there. Then the value in long on the data address. So we output the address that we want to read from, and then we can input from that data, and then we just return it. So we read PCI config at bus slot function offset. Now there's also eight byte versions and 16 byte versions, and there's also ways to write it. Basically, this is pretty cool. This is probably all we really need, but we don't want to copy the Linux kernel directly. We want to understand it, right? So that's that branch of the research here. So I went down a bit of a rabbit hole trying to figure out where the addresses were. I found out it's just memory mapped IO. I read something about a bar <laughs> and that there's a physical address programmed into it. Okay. But it boiled down to the same steps where you're writing which address you want to read to this magic number in the IO port space. And then you're reading the data from that other port. This thread was also interesting with someone asking basic questions about PCI that did not seem basic to me, to be honest. Lots of good information here if you're interested in reading it. It made the distinction that PCI is not the same as RAM. It's a memory linked right to the device. It's a way to route interrupt requests. And what we're using is the old PCI way of accessing the address space with in and out instructions. The new PCI uses memory mapped IO just like VGA where you're writing to an address in memory, and that gets mapped over to the device. But to get to that, first of all, you have to have PCIe, which I'm not even convinced that we have that. Second of all, you have to read ACPI tables. I found out that that's advanced configuration and power interface stored in BIOS memory. ACPI is some kind of, yeah, it's developed by Intel, Microsoft, and Toshiba. It seems like a whole nother can of worms, completely separate from this. So I'm overjoyed to use the old PCI version. I don't wanna even think about ACPI yet. And that general discussion, interestingly enough, links back to the OS dev article that we already saw. Really quickly, before we get into the other stuff, let's just notice that PCI opens a lot of doors for our operating system. What kind of PCI devices are there out there? Well, right now we're after the storage devices so that we can write a hard drive driver and an operating system. But there's also E1000, Ethernet, Serial, VGA, which we already have some support for, multimedia, audio and video, all kinds of stuff. And if we run info Q tree in PKOS on QEMU, we see the IDE driver for the CD. We see the E1000 driver, the network driver. We see VGA. We see some kind of serial device and we see our host bridge. So there's a lot to be said for this PCI stuff. How did I know to do that? Well, Stack Overflow, of course, told us that you can do info Q tree in the QEMU monitor. So in PKOS, if we do dot slash script slash docker shell to get into our shell, then we do dot script slash os dot pi run. Forgot to do exhost local root. We run it again. So here's our OS, but let's not forget that we have the QEMU terminal. And if we do info Q tree, that is the output that I pasted into the notes for this video. So how do we know we're doing anything with this? Um, I was still pretty confused at this point, figuring out how this all would work. I found someone's article about advanced QEMU debugging and how to debug PCI device reads and writes. Sounded right up my aisle. Sounded like exactly what we needed. I didn't really understand this article. It's a little over my head, but they did have this address calculation that looks a lot like the one from the Linux kernel that we saw. 
and it was for their OS. So I said, oh, your OS, huh? Let's check it out. So find it in the links for this video. They also have an OS called Cryptos, GFOUD tree, Grant F. So thanks, Grant F. That's pretty cool. And I was confused because we were, it seemed that we were assuming 0x80000 is the start of PCI address space, but that's incorrect. It's not the start of the address space. It's not memory mapped IO. It's simply writing exactly which PCI address we want to that IO port, not to memory. And then we're reading from the IO port, not from memory. So that clears that up for me. Wow, that was a lot of research. What do we do with all this? How do we get this into code? I'm interested in code. Well, the minimum viable product for this, the tiniest thing that we could do, is to read byte zero of the config at bus zero, device zero, function zero, offset zero. Really, we can read the first four bytes or 32 bits and check it out. And we can write some functions to parse it with the assumption that these are the fields and print it out and check out the value of those fields. Then we can start to compare it to info Q tree and see if it makes sense. And I believe the thing at 0000, zero, zero, zero is probably going to be the system bus. Yep, we have the i440fx system bus, or whatever it's called, at address 00.0, .0, and it has 0000, zero, 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 zero. and we can check and we can try using offset to parse the PCI ID field or whatever this subfield is or wherever it would say host bridge and see if these things match up. If they do match up to info Q tree, then I think we are on the right path. I think we've written a legit PCI enumeration. And of course we can do that for some of these other ones, assuming that they list what their address is. And then long-term, eventually, if we get good enough at reading these PCI devices, if we get comfortable enough, if we have the functions in place to make it easy, that's when we can really dig in and it's when we can really figure out how to interact with this PIX3 IDE device at address 01.1, which is an IDE controller. And we can start writing some bits and bytes and things to this IDE controller to our emulated hard drive. And eventually we can run this on real hardware and be set. Now it looks like it's a CD rather than a hard drive. So I'll have to check into that. We might have to reconfigure QEMU the way that we're launching it to have an emulated hard drive. Either way, we're making progress. Let's jump into the code. Enough talk, let's get coding. So what do we have so far? Well, first of all, all of the docs that you just saw are in the docs folder on this repo, and it's an Obsidian vault. So you can download obsidian.md and open it, and you can explore this exactly as you saw it on the screen here. In the source code, kernel.c, we just added a string comparison for LSPCI. If we type LSPCI, we run our little LSPCI function. Of course, in the header file, we define that so that it knows what we mean in the kernel file there. And then we have LSPCI, the function here. All it does is print hello PCI. And I took a stab at this the other day where we were setting all these variables. Eventually, we'll want to make this into a function, but we uh, do some bit arithmetic now, I think I might have messed up here because we were just looking at the Linux code and it bit shifted 16. I did 23, so that's probably wrong. I'll have to check it. Either way, we do our IO port out, we read it back in, and then we print it as a hex. It prints a zero, so I think it's a good start. But the problem is our IO port functions are only, I believe, for 8 or 16 bits, so we have to write a new out long function. What if we run this? If we run LSPCI on our OS, we get a read of 0x0. So that seems legit, but let's see if we can expand this a bit. All right, it's confusing enough doing all this stuff without having to remember what bit numbers we have to do for data types. So let's define some types just like they have in the Linux kernel, U32, U8 for unsigned integers. That's fantastic. How do we do that? All right, it took some Googling, but I found this page, which told me the sizes for everything. And I think I typed deft it correctly. Unsigned int, u32. Unsigned short, u16. Unsigned char, u4. And I tried to find a u8, but there was nothing. So that was kind of silly. Still runs, so it must work okay so far. So kernel.h defines these clunky IO port in, IO port outs. Let's add in long, out long. Now, is the port really a short, which is 16 bits? Maybe. Let me check. OS DevWiki to the rescue. If you check the port ranges for the IO ports on x86, 
one two bytes is all you have for the address range so I stand corrected in the assembly file we'll declare them as globals and then head down and start to write the implementation of these functions and obviously I'm going to copy what we have here as best I can so I did copy what we had and I essentially just replaced the input register where to store the value is now a 32-bit register same down here the value to write is extended AX 32 bits and if we Google around to check the x86 assembly reference, it does look like there's an opcode corresponding to outputting to EAX, or rather outputting from EAX. Let's check the in instruction and let's really go to the source here, which is from Intel itself, the architecture IA32 developer manual. We'll grab the combined manual for A to L because we're looking for in, which starts with an I found the in in the index, click it, and there is an opcode for in with 8 bits for the register, or the I.O. port rather, and EAX. Input a double word from that I.O. port into EAX, which is exactly what we're doing. So we probably didn't need to check the manuals for that, but it's good to know that they're in there. So our in and out long commands should be done. They should be working. What's next? And I'm glad that we're using these U types now because I didn't know what I was doing. I literally wrote 8 bits here, but I put a char, which I'm pretty sure is only 4 bits. So I'm changing them to shorts, or 16 bits, because that'll hold the 8 bits, or 2 bytes. Wait a second, I'm an idiot. Dang it, there are 8 bits in a character. Happens to uh, everyone, I guess. Okay, so this is not U4, this is U8. And I was correct the first time, so I'm going to change all that back. This should be U8, 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 U8. I changed this to left shift 16. I think this should be left shift 11. Let me check. Yes, this matches up with the Linux kernel now, which is great. We have U8s, 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 shifting by 16, 11, and 8, and then just oring in the offset. 16, 11, 8. So we're good there. Let's see if we compile. Let's see if this runs with the new out L and do in long as well. This is a U32. We don't have to worry about it only being 16 bits now. And let's see if it even compiles. Nope. Okay, I need to do dot dot slash common that built and it runs whoa some fancy value that we got this time okay that might be right it might be completely wrong okay so i did a bit of a refactor here we now have a read pci port function with the bus the device the function the offset and we're basically doing the same thing we set bit 31 to 1 i should actually move this down here we and out anything that's not needed because we only need 8 bits for these but they are use wait a second I thought there were 16 bits, but there are actually eight. Okay, we don't need those, but we do need to do that to function. Anyway, we're doing the same thing as we were before. It's just more clearly delineated. We out, we in, and we're good. If we run it, we get the same result, as you can see here. So now how do we make sense of this? And can we read other numbers? Let's try uh, device one, see if it breaks. Now we got a zero. Let's try offset five. Ooh, interesting. Okay. So really, we need to parse this, but I think that might have to wait for another video because this is getting pretty long. We haven't quite enumerated PCI, but we have one of the fundamental tools that we need to enumerate PCI and start to make sense of the data we're getting back from our PCI devices. So with that, I think I'm going to call it a video. And in the next one, we can really dive into this and hopefully get some good results and truly enumerate PCI space. We've taken a big step in that direction. Thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying the PCAST series. Leave a comment, a like, a subscribe, whatever you want to do. Or better yet, join our Discord. There's a link in the description. And if you have ideas for how we can make this series better or any of the other PageKey products that we're working on building right now, I'll leave that up to you. Let's talk it through. Until then, see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.